Hello and welcome to podcast number one from Sorry Me. I am Sorry Me, I'm Rachel. You have probably found me already on Instagram, I'm at Sorry Me there. And I also have an Etsy shop which is Sorry Me UK, all one word. Um, so here we are, I did promise that I would be back in the new year with a podcast, so here I am. Um, it's now the last week in January and it's taken me um, the past few weeks to kind of think about what I'm going to do. Um, here's Tilly of course, always getting in on the action. Um, I wasn't really sure whether to do a podcast in the traditional sense of just kind of sitting here talking to you for the whole time. Um, obviously that's what we're all familiar with in terms of podcasts but a lot of the ones that I watch um, obviously they take the format of works in progress, finished objects and new new yarn that people have bought and future plans. Um, I kind of have a feeling that for me to do that, that would take up all of three minutes and that would be it really because I don't always seem to have a lot on the go so I'm not sure um, sort of how I will fill my podcasts. I think what I might do is add in little bits of video here and there because I did take part in Vlogmas, as I said, and I got lots of nice feedback and lots of you like to see me working, you like to see me um, doing other crafts, doing stuff in the kitchen. So I think I'm going to just do a bit of that, uh, basically just an extended Vlogmas type of video. I really enjoyed doing that and I, it kind of worked well with what I do and how I, <laughs> how I go about my daily life. So I'm just going to play it by ear, see how it goes. Um, I have got a few things planned for this video. So firstly, um, what will I kick off with? Will I tell you about myself? Yeah? Okay. She's up on my desk trying to get ribbons and all sorts. I'm sitting at the other side of my desk just now because the sun is so bright over that side that I can't see and you wouldn't see me. So now she's just having a right good nosy. I'll just see. Look at her. I'm going to have to get her out of here. She's going to be too distracting. So I don't know whether you found me from Vlogmas or you found me from Instagram or whatever but um, my first taste of doing these videos was Vlogmas. I've just noticed Joshua's Merry Christmas sign is still on the door. Um, I kind of jumped head first into Vlogmas. I didn't really plan it. I just somehow ended up doing it every day and really, really enjoyed it. And like I said, I got lots of great feedback. So that was good. That encouraged me to continue. Um, never done anything like this before so I basically learnt on the job as it were and um, jumped in head first which is kind of what I do with everything. Um, so yeah so here I am never thought in a million years I'd be doing this but here we are. Um, so you probably know a bit about me already I sew, I have a sewing business so you me and I make project bags, notions, pouches, that kind of thing. Um, I've done hand sewing in the past, embroidery, cross stitch, I crochet, I knit, I do, I like paper crafts, I like a bit of scrapbooking, card making, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, I just love all crafts, I love making stuff, I love being creative in the kitchen, love cooking, uh, I like a bit of gardening. Yeah, so this, these vlogs, podcasts, whatever we're going to call them, just going to have a bit of everything in them I think. Um, yeah, so that's me. Um, shall we start off with some finished objects? Um, I don't have very many. And the first one, uh, if you did follow my Vlogmas, you may have seen these already. These were my advent socks. I got some wool in my advent calendar and just knitted up socks with them. So they are both the same. Well, the same wools. They come out slightly differently, just depends on how the colours are pulled. So these are a bit of a mixture of colours really. I made my advent calendar myself so I did actually plan the wheels in the order that I wanted them and um, sorry if I'm gonna repeat myself because you would have seen this in Vlogmas. Um, I had wanted my stripes to be probably about fingers width but I had never done this before so I didn't know how much yarn I'd need so I made my balls too big. So um, I only used half the wool. So they were finished about 22nd of December and I really enjoyed knitting those. I did them two at a time, two, toe up two at a time and that was the first time I'd done that. But I found it really easy. I tried it before years ago but I just, I didn't really understand um, the anatomy of a sock so much then. And I do now and I think that made it a lot easier. 
Um, I even found casting the toe on so much easier this time as well. I used a, I think it's like a, I don't know if it's like a twisty cast on, you know where you, you kind of hook the yarn over your fingers and you do all kinds of weird stuff, but I just find it so much easier this time. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with them. I did a, a fish lips kiss heel for the first time as well, which was so easy and so quick. Um, so I'm definitely going to stick with two at a time from now on. So I'm pleased they were finished. Um, another little whip of whip, not a whip, a finished object I've got. I actually just decided to try this last night. Well, I went online to look for something else and then I saw this and then I thought, why not just grab the supplies I need and just do it now? I'm never normally that um, sort of decisive, but I just did it. So I grabbed some wool. I thought this one would be perfect. This was a sparkly one. I got this for a Christmas gift and it's the nicest peachy pale pink. It's such a beautiful colour. That is definitely like a total favourite colour of mine and it's got sparkles to it. Um, and I'll give you a clue as to what I was having a go at. Um, I went to a craft sale just before Christmas and it was all, it was like a jumbo sale but just all craft stuff. So I've got these 30p for a set of two cable needles. I thought you know, I might as well have those because I did want to try cable at some point. So I love the thought of like nice chunky cable socks or whatever. Um, so yeah, I saw this little design and thought that would be good to try. And obviously using a thicker wool, this is a DK I think, um, that would knit up a lot quicker than doing it with sock wool. So I found a, a little tutorial online. I will put a link to it down below. And this is what I've made little cable hearts I can't believe I've actually done that um, it wasn't difficult particularly it was it hurt my brain though <laughs> um, I didn't really understand the terminology used for the cable stitches um, but it was linked back every now and then well every time it mentioned a cable stitch to do you go back scroll back the page and it tells you exactly what to do and um, so I had to do that every time there was uh, cable instruction so there's a lot of scrolling up and down um, but it was very easy to follow it wasn't difficult it was just oh it fried my brain a bit I cannot imagine knitting a whole jumper or a cardigan or even a sock and doing that because although it was kind of enjoyable to learn something new I wouldn't find that enjoyable on a large pattern because if I'm knitting something big, I knit to relax, so it, it didn't, I didn't find that relaxing as such. I think my whole body was actually tense. And by the end of knitting this, my hands were crippled. <laughs> they were so sore. I used, um, I've got some bamboo needles. Um, so I used them and the wool, they weren't very like slippy, so the wool didn't slip off them very easily. I don't know if that's just because I was knitting <clears throat> kind of tightly because I was a bit tense or because of the needles or what so yeah when, by the time I finished my fingers were very very sore Um, I think this probably took me maybe two or three hours to do in total Um, and it, it you could the pattern's just a repeat so you you start at the bottom and then you come up to here well you do the first heart and you can either finish it there or you can keep going so I thought I wanted to do two so I stopped there and then I just continued to knit a, a longer rectangle so that I'd have enough to make a back. And what I've done is just sewn up the edges and stuffed this with lavender. So it's a little lavender pillow. Um, so I'm going to pop that probably into my fabric drawers. So if you order anything from me, it might smell lavender in the future. So I'm really pleased with that. I can't believe I've done it. I can't believe it actually looks right. And I managed to do it with no mistakes, which is not like me. I usually always make mistakes. So that was a nice quick little project and quite unplanned as well because I didn't plan on doing that. As I said, I was looking for something else at the time, but that's what Pinterest is like, isn't it? Something else catches your eye. It was another knitting thing I was looking for, but then I saw this and thought, oh, I'm going to give it a go. So quite chuffed with that. And um, that's given me a little, another little finished object because that's it. That is my finished objects. I haven't actually done a lot more knitting since Christmas. I raced through my advent socks really quickly because I enjoyed I did enjoy doing those and then um, I, I said I had some wool left over so that brings me on to whips works in progress so with the rest of the wool I had left I cast on another pair of socks these are in still in my Christmas bag that's what the jingling is I've got little 
Christmas bells and things on there. Um, so yeah, I cast on another pair of socks, two at a time, and I used the wools that I had, but then I kind of went back to my stash and changed it up a bit just so it was a bit more matchy and stuff, because I think I've got, I went and reused another one that I'd already used, because I liked the colour, um, so that one is already on my other socks. And then annoyingly, when I got to this ball of wool, it's obviously stripy because one sock's got a big green stripe on it, which is kind of ugly and I really I'm not liking that at all. But the other one, the colours have blended in quite nicely. So I wish I had paid more attention when I balled that up and not used that one. So I don't, I kind of don't know if I like these as much because that green stripe's really annoying me. So these are nearly finished. I've done these exactly the same as my other advent socks. Fish lips, kiss, heel, toe up. And my other ones were quite long and I quite liked that. So I'm going to make these uh, kind of longish as well. So I've got another inch or two to go and then the cuff. So um, I'll get those finished hopefully. But I kind of lost my mojo a bit. I think because I wasn't loving them so much. But I just need to, to bu burst through them and get them finished. So that they feel like they're taking me ages because I haven't really wanted to work on them. And I think after Christmas... Um, so I got out of the way, we just kind of relaxed and did an awful lot of nothing and I don't know, that just makes me lazier and lazier. So I kind of didn't want to do uh, any knitting really after Christmas. Um, although what I tend to do is I do flip from craft to craft and I know that my mojo goes sometimes and I just let it, I don't force it. Um, so what I ended up doing was a lot of reading over Christmas. I had a lot of Christmas novels from some of my favourite authors and I mean I can only read Christmas books at Christmas I can't read a Christmas book at any other time of the year so um, I kind of saved them up and I had loads of time to read which is good because when you read you can't multitask you can't do anything else at least when you knit you can watch TV or Netflix or something but reading is just reading really um, so I've really been enjoying reading I've been finding it really, really relaxing in the evenings and currently I'm just about to finish this one the Hooga Holiday and I don't think there was ever a book more suitable for me. This is perfect and if you followed my vlogmas or if you follow me on Instagram you will know how much I love Hooga. I'm all about twinkly lights, candle lights, um, cosy, being comfy and cosy and warm and tasty foods and tasty drinks and everything so this is a lovely book. I really like it and I, I love the cover as well. It's so pretty. So I've nearly finished that I've only got that little bit to go. It's got a handmade bookmark in it. It's just a sort of patchworky applique one that I made with some cath kids and fabrics. So that one actually, although it doesn't seem it, it doesn't say it, it's coming up to Christmas in the book. So it kind of is a Christmassy one, but it isn't overly Christmas, so it's okay for me to read that just now. Okay, so where are we? We've done whips. Oh no, I have one more whip actually. Um I have a project bag that has sat for ages. This is one of my lovely cat ones. This is a big zippy one. Love, love, love this lining by Lewis and Irene. Um, these were socks that I started um, quite a while ago. When was it? I keep all my notes in notebooks. Every pair of socks I've made, I've got very messy notes. I write down what yarn I used, what pattern I used, and just keep like tallies of the rows and stuff because um although i'm doing two at a time now i didn't before as the one at a time and obviously i want them to be the same length so they have to have the same number of rows i don't know if you can hear tilly she's got a bit of paper or something in the hall and she's chasing it around so yeah i started these on the fifth the fourth of may last year um so here they are well oh, here's the first one it's nice, nice colours, like it. You'll see from my nails that these are definitely my colours. And this is just a vanilla sock, but what I did was added um, a knit, knit four, purl four, knit to eight before the end, purl four, and knit four again. So it's just got a little, it's kind of like train tracks, I suppose, little rows there. And I used a contrast toe and a cuff. So the yarn that I'm using is, I have to look in my book because I've run it down, Stylecraft Head Over Heels, which is this one. 
um, I don't know what shade that is at the moment. So it's really nice. And Cascade Heritage Sock Yarn, which is so, so soft. It's lovely, really, really nice yarn to knit with. And it's gonna be lovely to wear. So finished that one and thought, oh, I really need to finish the other one because it annoys me kind of having a half finished project. Um, so I cast this on the other day, Friday maybe, I can't remember now. Um, done the cuff which was a twisted rib which oh, I found took ages because you knit you do your cuff as normal but when you knit you knit into the back of the stitch so it was three knit one purl I think so it took ages I got really slow so now I'm just on to the leg I'm a few rows away from the heel um, yeah so I'm just hoping to bash through them and then I can sort of hopefully finish my other advent socks and then I'm clear to think about new projects because I don't I don't like having too many on the go because I find that I get all like ah oh, I don't know what to do and then I just don't do any of them so I like to get stuff finished um what else future plans um I don't have major any major plans because um Oh, I did try another sock over Christmas, actually. I do have it, actually. Still in another Christmassy project bag that I made. Um, this one has been relegated to the naughty shelf, really. Um, I got some beautiful yarn. Really, really lovely yarn with sparkle to it again. I don't know if it's going to focus very well. Anyway, this is from Lay Family Yarn, one of the Christmas colourways. Um, and I started to knit the Cha Cha Chevron sock, which is by, is it Sandra Cherry Hart, I want to say? Um, so I've got this far, but I don't like it. It looks really messy to me. Um, and I am, was not enjoying knitting this at all. The pattern is like 10 or something, 10 or 11 different rows. So you don't get into any kind of routine of remembering what the rows are. Um, so literally had to check the pattern after every row which takes so much time and as I said when I knit I just want to relax and I didn't find it relaxing it took me ages so I just wasn't enjoying them so I think they're going to get frogged but the wool is on the back it's knitted up really nicely and that just reminds me of like a gingerbread house or a hot chocolate with just all the different colours of the brown like the milk on top I don't know. It's definitely Christmassy, isn't it? It's beautiful. So I'm just gonna forget about them for a little while because I can't face frogging them yet. After all the hard work, it took me a long time to get to just that point of knitting them. Um, so yeah, I literally had forgotten about them until just there the now. Um, so future plans, yeah. I've not thought too much, but I did get this yarn for Christmas. This is by Wild Rose Yarns and it was on it. A little wish list that I made so I did choose it the colours are looking very uh, springtime to me like crocuses it definitely says crocuses hyacinths so I think that will give me a bit of inspiration for doing some springtime socks no idea what the pattern um, I'll use I like really sort of plain patterns like I've done Hermione's everyday sock about three or four times because I just love how easy that is and you don't have to check the pattern and I've done the sugar frost socks once so things like that if you can think of any other patterns like that that you think I might like please let me know and preferably free because I've bought a couple of patterns recently paid for and then I haven't liked them or haven't enjoyed knitting them and that's kind of disappointing because it's a waste of money really if you can't if you don't know that you're going to enjoy the pattern then I would rather just use a free pattern so let me know um Last year I also got some of these wools that were very kindly sent to me as a, a gift from a friend and I thought that this purple and this one, this might make a nice contrast, it's looking a bit more blue on the screen than it is, it's more purpley, I don't know whether that will focus better. So I thought that would make a nice contrast with the heel and the cuff and the toe maybe. So. Um, yeah, that will hopefully give me a bit of inspiration to finish my other socks and then I can maybe do something with these. I'm looking forward to caking that up because usually when you cake up a yarn, it looks different again to how it looks in the skein. So um, I might cake that up sometime soon. Maybe 
this week. Um, okay, future plans. Another future plan. I'm thinking it's always in the back of my mind to start another crochet blanket just because I love having something on the go that you can pick up that you don't have to think about and that's why I love crochet blankets. I have done, I've got a granny stripe which you probably see on Instagram a lot in my photos. I've done a V stitch and I've done a granny square one with lots of different granny squares which I didn't enjoy um, joining so I won't be doing that kind of thing again but I was thinking maybe corner to corner I like the way that the stitch, stitches look quite dense when you do it that way and that looks for quite a cosy blanket so I might do that um, just stripes and I've been I'd sorted out some wools and just odds and ends and I've got oh god they're all falling out uh, a little basket here just with some bright colours that th they're all falling out um, that I thought all look nice together so I may use these to start off uh, a blanket and some nice bright fun colours, they're really happy colours, um, so I may do that, uh, I've never done corner to corner before so that's something else I'm going to have to look up how to do, but um, oh, crochet's pretty easy so I don't think I'll have any problems with that, touch wood, um, so yeah I don't have any massive plans, I find that I only do crafting for myself in the evenings or at the weekends and I've just been quite tired lately so haven't done a lot of knitting in the evening um, we've been catching up on a lot of TV that we've recorded, so that's been quite nice. Um, yeah. So, what else have we been doing? I managed to do some sewing um, over the past few weeks so that I could do an Etsy shop update finally, because it feels like ages since I've updated it. Um, there's a few things left. So, what I had made were lots of drawstring bags. This fabric combination is so beautiful. I got some of this fabric here it's a chambray chambray I don't know how you pronounce it but it's a pinky red one it's just so lovely and then I've lined with a nice floral so that is definitely one of my favourites and this is oh I love this fabric flowers and ditzy florals and then stripes inside so lovely and I love how all my fabrics kind of go together as well so those are small project bags there's a few of those in the shop I did do a few large ones there's not many left Um, this is one that is left the sort of inspiration for this one I don't know if you've ever seen the early Tilda books but there's a lot of red polka dot teamed with ditzy pretty florals and that kind of gave me a bit of inspiration for this one so I love that one this is a large I'll show you the small against the large so there's a small and there's a large they've got very wide bottoms so you can fit a lot in them the small is great for one or two skein projects like shawls or socks. The large are very, very large. You fit quite a few skeins in there if you're doing something slightly larger. And um, I showed you some pouches in my Vlogmas and they were quite popular. So I had a, quite a lot of requests for those um, once I started back to work in January. So this is the only one that's left actually. This Kath Kidson stripe with pink gingham lining. I've brought my own one up here just to show you sort of what what can go in it and what you can do with it because I think when they're empty you can't really see properly so this is my one Kath Kidson again um, so it's got a magnetic button there to hold it closed so mine's is probably a bit too full to actually close at the minute um, so the top bit here has got a pocket in it which actually doesn't look like a big pocket but I find that bit's really useful um, it's padded so you can stick your needles in it pins whatever safety pins I like to keep a needle minder here. This is a Pedro's plaque one. Most people I know have got one of these, at least one. It's got a magnet on the back, an oh, open magnet on the front, and you can put it on your fabric if you're... These are great if you're doing things like cross stitch. You just attach it to your work and you pop your needle onto there when you're not sewing. Um, I can guarantee if I do a bit of stitching on the couch, my needle ends up down the side of the couch. So these are brilliant. I don't know where these have been all my life. But I've got two or three of these now. So I just find that they sit really nicely on the pocket of my pouch. Because that's where I tend to keep my needles if I'm uh, working downstairs or not in the sewing room. So in the little pocket here, I've also got my wool needles. The packet fits perfectly in there. And I've got one of my needle gauges. These are also in my shop. But that fits perfectly in the pocket, which was just a really good coincidence. 
um, so that's always handy. There is a ribbon going across here. I've got a, one of these stitch keepers on it, but you can use, if you use bulb pins as your stitch markers, you can attach them there. You can attach your stitch markers on here. So that's quite handy. Again, if you're using it for like cross stitch or something, you can attach some threads onto here because you always end up with little extra bits of thread and I never like to throw them out. So I keep, keep them attached to bits here. Uh, you've got a nice big pocket here. I've not actually got anything in there at the moment, but that fits a notebook in nicely. And I believe they also fit Kindles in quite nicely as well. Um, and then you've got slots in here, which are brilliant for crochet hooks, pens, DPNs. Um, I've slotted my circulars in there and then there's a big uh, pocket at the front so your cables can sit in there. If you're using interchangeable needles, you can keep your cables in here, your needles in there or whatever. I've got more bits of threads and I've got all sorts in here. Anything I've ever used when I've been crafting is just in here. Um, yeah, so that is a sewing pouch. Super, super handy. Lots of people tell me how useful they find these and um, even years later they're like, I'll still use it every day. Um, etc. So yeah, I think there's only one of them left in my shop at the moment. So I'm going to be busy the next few weeks stocking up again, making more stock. I'm also working on some new products. So um, I could probably show you them next time. Uh, they're not quite ready yet. That's why I can't show you them today. Um, while I was just playing about my pouch there, um, I forgot to show you something else, it's, which is a new product that I have in my shop. And these are these little notebooks. I had this little lady designed um, by uh, an artist that I know through Instagram. She's called Stamped Out and I basically told her what I wanted and I wanted it in her style, which is this little lady here. So this is basically sorry me in an illustration and these are project notebooks. These are A6, perfect size for your project bags and the best bit, it's got square paper, love square paper. So they are perfect for anyone who does any crafts. Um, so that is my shop update. I think I've covered everything I was going to talk to you about. Um, we're looking at maybe nearly half an hour there. I didn't realise I would manage to have enough to fill half an hour. Um, I'm going to pop off and do uh, some stuff in the kitchen now. I'm going to take you with me because I think you might like to watch. Hopefully the video works okay and um, turns out okay. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I will sign off here. Thank you for watching. Um, if you want to keep up with what I do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You won't get inundated with notifications or anything. You'll just get one notification on your device when I post a new video. Um, which will hopefully be not too far away and hopefully I will have some things to show you. Like I said, I don't always have a lot of um, finished objects or whips. So hopefully I can show you some um, updates and hopefully now that I've told you what works in progress I've got, that will hopefully spur me on to finishing them so that I can show you that I've actually done something. Okay, so I will catch you later. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Bye. Okay, so I've come down to the kitchen now um, you can probably guess what I'm going to have a go at making. Um, I have been thinking a lot lately about um, the candles that I use. And of course we all go to Ikea and we buy mountains of tea lights and candles. Um, and for some reason it, it became apparent to me that the wax that they use in all these cheap candles is a derivative of paraffin. Which, well it is paraffin, which comes from petrol and... Um, you know, why would we want to be breathing that in? Um, I use candles a lot. Um, I like to use them in the bathroom a lot in the morning and at night before I go to bed. I don't like to have the big light on. I like candle light. A candle at bath or a candle lit shower sends me straight to sleep when I get to bed. And um, obviously being in the bathroom, you think you're in a, such a tiny room breathing in all this, um, these fumes. It can't be good for you breathing in whatever crap is in the commercial candles. So I went on to eBay, found some soy wax, and I also found some um, wicks. These are eco ones as well. So if you're going to make eco candles, make sure you buy 
eco wicks because a lot of the wicks had paraffin on them and you need to make sure you buy the right size for the jars that you're going to be using. Um, this one had a candle in it before, this is just a jam jar or I don't know what, peanut butter I think or something came in that. That I think had a candle in it before. I went to the charity shop to look for some vessels and I found that and thought that would make a lovely little candle holder. And I got this one in TK Maxx. I thought that is, that's very me. Definitely have to have that one. Um, I've got some essential oils. I'm not sure if I'm going to put them in this time or just leave my candles plain. Um, I do like just plain candles on. Um, so I'll see. I might add some scent. I'm not too sure. Um, another thing that I've got is some glue dots because the um, the wicks, once you put them in your glass, they'll float about a bit once you put the wax in, so the glue dots will hopefully keep them in place. I also have a little bag here that has some beeswax pellets in it. Um, I had bought them for something else, so I might add some of those as well. Um, I think you need to add quite a lot for it to have any effect on the scent. Um, they're not very highly scented, so I don't think that will affect the scent of the candles at all. Um, I have a jug here as well, which I keep just for non-food stuffs. I think at one point I was going to try making soaps and things, but that didn't go very well. So it's never really been used much, so it'll be perfect for this. So I read online somewhere that it's a good idea to heat your jars up a little bit before you put the hot wax in them. So I've just popped the oven on really low, and I'm going to pop them into the oven just to get warm. Um, I'm not sure. I think that was maybe just to stop the glass cracking or I'm not sure what the reason behind that is but I'm going to do it anyway and then I'm going to, no first of all I'm going to measure out my wax because for every vessel you need, you need twice as much wax, wax flakes so that times two will be enough wax to fill that so I'm going to measure out my wax and put it in my jug and then once I've done that I'll put these in the oven and then I'll melt my wax. to be quite a professional candle maker so um, I will trust that this is the right way to do it. I know that when you melt things over water usually you wouldn't have the vessel touching the water, like you put a bowl instead of a jug straight in the water. So hopefully this will be okay though. I don't think it's going to be as temperamental as uh, chocolate to melt. My wax is nearly ready, it's nearly all melted. My um, dishes have been in the oven so I'm just going to stick my uh, wicks in now so you can use different things to stick them in but I've got these crafted glue dots and I thought they would be really um, ideal actually so just attach it to the bottom oh, they're sticking to everything except the wick that's it so I'm just going to get it onto the wick and then I can just stick that in the bottom of my glass and that will stop it from moving about when I pour the wax in. So I have actually added some more wax to the jug because as it melted of course the volume went way down and now the jug is about three quarters full. Um, I did add some of the beeswax pellets as well. So that's all melted nicely together and it's gone slightly yellowy because of all the beeswax. That's okay, I don't mind. So I did read something online about having your wax at a certain temperature, but I don't have a thermometer, so I'm just going to ignore that bit. Um, so it's completely melted, and like I said, it's gone quite yellowy. It's like weed. Um, and it has reduced quite a bit. So I'm going to I'm going to fill up my favourite jars first, and then see how it goes, and then I can always um, melt some more wax. So um. I'm loving this little jar, I hope this doesn't drip, although one of the things that I looked up online said that this is a lot nicer to um, clean, it's not got that same sticky residue that um, other wax has. I'm going to need way more wax, so I'm just going to do another melt 
and I also read that you can do it in the microwave so I'm going to do the next lot in the microwave that glue dot has just melted straight off um, with the heat of the wax there so that hasn't actually been very helpful uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one I've got some kebab stick things here so I'm going to maybe just try and hold it in place somehow I know that you can hold them in place like that as well so should do that. I brought some washi tape so that I can um, hold the sticks together as well. I just brought these are just basically cocktail no not cocktail sticks kebab sticks from the kitchen drawer. Uh, I think maybe have um, stuck these together first. This is all going to be a bit of a learning curve for me because I haven't done it before. seems to be holding it in place okay so I'm gonna be happy with that as long as it's semi oh, it's just come out. as long as it's semi straight I don't mind too much and if it could stay on the bottom that would be quite helpful it's just moved about a little bit um, that's fine that's in place it might have a bit of a kink to it but I'm sure that will be fine um, I think when it dries it might not be quite so yellow jar here definitely looks like a jar of beef. Um, so I'm going to melt some more wax and top that one up. Um, I'm going to have to try and do the same ratio of soy wax to beeswax so that I get the same colour otherwise the candle might be um, kind of stripy. That took about 15 minutes to melt on the hob so that took ages so it felt like ages Hopefully it won't take so long in the microwave. I'm just going to do another, I'll do another jug full because I know that it reduces down quite a bit. So there's my jug. I'm just going to add in a bit of beeswax on the top. The beeswax took a little longer to melt because um, the soy is little flakes. You can see some of the light is not good there with the sun. And the the wax, so you can see it looks like little lentils. So I'm going to stick that in the microwave. Oops, it's not a good idea leaving that in there. Um, I'm going to use this spatula just for doing stuff like this now. I won't use it again in the kitchen. It's an old one that I don't really like anyway. I'll stick that in the microwave. I'll just do a minute at a time and see how that goes. So there's my little jar. really want to move that. I maybe should have put them on the tray so that I could lift it all a bit easier. Um, I will do that with the others. I don't really want to move that one until it's set a bit better. But I'm going to grab the tray then. Okay, so my second jug full of wax melted a lot quicker in the microwave. Um, I'm just going to top this one up again. Hopefully the base won't move too much. Oh, it's quite dribbly. Oh my god, it's really dribbling on my towel. Oh, there we go. I hope that washes out of the towel as well. Um, so I'm going to use the sticks again to hold, hold the wick up. That one didn't seem to move about as much as the other one, so hopefully it will behave a bit better. your candle to hold your wick in place. They don't look too expensive. I don't want to buy too much stuff because um, just in case I tried this and didn't enjoy it or whatever I didn't think I would do any more. Um, so all about was the wax and the wicks. And I already had some essential oils in anyway, so um, if I want to use them then I can do melting down a lot so this was a kilo bag I got and it looked huge but I don't think I'm going to get much 
uh, out of it quite many candles but it's okay because the bag itself costs about six pounds or so six pounds something and that included free delivery and I think that's pretty good really it's okay the wax the beeswax um i already had that so i don't know how much it cost but i would have bought that on ebay as well so you can get all these supplies really cheaply Lavender and orange oils to that one just to see what it would be like. I never know how much oil to use really because there was a bit of conflict and advice online. Um, so I've just added a couple of drops of each. I'm going to try and be clever and use the same sticks for both of those candles. I should have done it before I picked the phone up. Um, so I'm going to take. Oh, it's not working. <laughs> I'm going to do that in a minute when I put the phone down. Um, that's the one I made first, so it's already starting to set. Um, so that's good, that means I can move it and I think it looks lovely. I can get an idea of what it looks like now. I'm really pleased with that. Um, that little dish was just 50p in the charity shop. Um, I've used the whole kilo bag um, and I've got five candles, so I'm pretty, pretty happy with that because this one, I don't know if you can tell, it's really big and this is quite big as well. So, um, yeah, I've got five big, fairly big candles from that, and that bag of wax cost, I think, it was about six fifty. And the wicks were, I don't know, two pounds something. But there's fifty in the bag there. So, um, yeah, these work out okay. Then this is something I would definitely do again, and I think they would make amazing gifts. I would love to see how make gifts like this. Um, I'll see how the scented one goes as well, and what that turns out like when I burn it. Um, I also read online that it's a good idea not to use the candles for at least a week. So I'm going to have to leave these aside for a week before I use them. Um, that's going to be really hard because I'm looking forward to using them. Um, now that I've melted up the wax, I definitely maintain that it smells like white chocolate. I really did think it smelled like that as it was melting. So um, I'm quite pleased that it has a nice smell, nothing unpleasant. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed uh, seeing how I did this. If you fancy having a go, please look online for yourself for some instructions because I would hate to have given you any wrong advice and for you to follow it and for anything to go wrong. So have a little read yourself of some stuff online. There's loads out there, lots of YouTube videos as well on how to do it. Um, and let me know if you have a go, I'd love to see. And when I went to the charity shop I was hoping to find some nice little teacups. I didn't see anything really um, pretty so I'll keep looking and hopefully find something else soon that's really cheap. So I'm going to go and leave these to set now and I'd better get on with something useful with my day.